Hey guys, welcome to Clockwork Dandy Dandy Needles for another breakdown of Undergirl Murder Fast. We're here for episode number nine. Another murder mystery has fallen upon us. We've changed the pace, but it is still linked, which I really like. It doesn't mean we're rushing the plot or anything. I have a theory already, but I've learnt my lesson from last time that it might be a bit too early. However, I will tell you my theory, I'll tell you my culprit, and I'll tell you exactly what is leading me to think it's them. The last time I was horrifically wrong anyway, so we'll have to see if I have learnt anything or I'm starting to get a hang of a few things. Thank you for tuning in once again guys. We are approaching the end of season review. Full overview. The full overview is nearly ready to record so that one I am going to be able to have up within a few weeks. Schedule my end of season because I'm going to be out when it should go up but I am going to probably have a rough stab in the dark at what I think my final three are. I have given out all the awards so the awards are written. I've got a lot of it done. I just need to make sure that I'm ready for when I go to Madrid and I'm also going to try and get some footage from Madrid because I know they're streaming it. So I might put the link up for you guys as well. So I think it's time to get going. Do make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss out on any of the information coming your way. Cold open, but the cold opens are always very important. It did remind me of Van Helsing, the one which has Hugh Jackman in it. I actually like that film. That film is really good. Despite it being old, a little bit gimmicky at times, I really enjoyed it. I think, is it Richard Roxburgh who plays Dracula? I really like that trailer dracula for some reason we go into black and white it's cold we don't know any of the characters whatsoever there's color popping for the human bean juice when you see it but again we are chasing the monster we're chasing the beast and we're setting fire to a tower to try and smoke the beast out but you can see it's a mother and child the mother is protecting the child so we are definitely seeing werewolves involved a few notable figures is that the doctor is visible in the audience to keep that one in mind but many many stories have started with people burning wolves and stuff very recently i watched a video about the beast of gavodon it's weird because i saw that about a week ago and now we're talking werewolves everywhere i go there are werewolves and i found it very fascinating that in the beast of gavodon nobody was ever caught but they actually think it was big wolves just big wolves picking people off one by one because a lot of the victims were children or women and it's because they would go out get the firewood go and get the water which would make the very easy targets for a very hungry wolf grim topic but very fascinating to go and look at the suspicions that people were throwing around because suspicion really plays into a key role when it comes to this week's episode because in a small village word gets round everybody knows everybody and of course that's when people start to suspect people so the suspicion thing is also going to be something that we have to be careful about because i think people are going to throw suspicions left right and center just because you're not from town no signs of sherlock this week but we have team cage up in the alps and they have the gem fog either doesn't know or he thinks they put it back or he's allowed them to keep it on maybe a lease or something so we'll have to see what happened there i don't think it's the last time we'll ever see sherlock holmes i just don't know if he's going to come back this season it seems at the end that team royce has also appeared it is nice to see the start of the show again settling down into a nice calm pace with aya her story about the werewolf taking place on a rakugo style stage which i really like she gives you a bit of an idea about werewolves up front i think this is important because a big reason why a lot of us were thrown on the vampire case is because they didn't quite hide some facts about the vampire we weren't a hundred percent sure on certain things like the fingers growing back that for me was a big red flag because i ruled the suspect out because i didn't know they could grow their fingers back the rakugo style intro to a werewolf might be important things i gleaned from the performance the performance is amazing she's a curse throwing knives at our boy who has wolf ears which i think is really nice three types of werewolf different types of forms when they're in their big form, they can't be hurt. Blend into society, they can understand human language. All very important, I think. I don't know if there'd be any telltale signs because I know with the vampires, they had the really sexy eyeliner under the eyes, which is red, which I thought was really cool. But I don't know at the moment if there's any evidence that a human is a werewolf without really waiting for the full moon to appear. Plenty of Aya and Suguru puns left, right and centre. I absolutely love the chemistry between these guys. You've kind of got the goof, then you've got the serious one and it's just like joke after joke. Generally, it's body part puns, which I've noticed, which I think really, really work. Anyone else think this was Zeke Jaeger from Attack on Titan? The town that Attack on Titan is set in is based on a walled city in Germany. He looks like Zeke. He also kind of looks like a werewolf because he's so shaggy and he's got all that hair. He's also a doctor and he's holding a weapon. Can't say the G word on here. He's holding a weapon and I don't think he can be trusted. I mean, he could be holding it because he thinks there's a werewolf around and he's trying to protect himself. The problem with this guy is... 
He's the first person we meet from the village. And if you remember last time in the vampire case, the first person we met was the culprit. It would be too obvious, but then the anime thinks it's going to be too obvious and maybe they're doing that on purpose. But welcome to rural Europe. This really does feel like rural Europe. We're up in the Alps. It's a little town. There's wooden buildings everywhere. The church is your centre point. It's very visible from all the places around it. People aren't too close, but they're close enough to protect each other. There's probably a watchtower somewhere. When I went to Germany, something I couldn't get my head around was when I went to the rural parts, there were watchtowers everywhere. And I couldn't figure out for the life of me why there would be watchtowers. And it's actually because of wolves, because they still have wolves over there. So I was like, oh, actually... That does make sense. They're protecting their livestock. They're protecting their cattle. I like the fact that a lot of the trends in this case do match the Beast of Gavudon. The victims are young. I know in this case like, it's going to be a serial killer. It's the reason why a lot of them are young is because, again, they were the ones who would go out to do menial tasks for their families. It's a very different period where everybody needs to be put in their weight to help support the family. The kids would go out and do the menial tasks like, I'll go and get some water for you. I'll go and gather some firewood for you left with just the doctor's word about the bodies now Aya does ask the question are you sure the bodies are the girls that are going missing mm -hmm. obviously we only have his point of view it's a bit of a suspicious question it probably is as he says there's birthmarks and stuff that we can compare it to my issue would be that i know they come back in really bad state Maybe that's why the mastermind's doing it, to mimic a wolf, catch my drift. Maybe whoever's doing these really messed up experiments, cough, cough, making it look like it. So you know when you get those cases where the perpetrator makes it look like a self-deletion? They do that on purpose to try and go, oh, there's no foul play here. It, the person did it themselves. That's what I'm kind of thinking along the lines of with this case. It's going to come down to somebody's doing experiments for nefarious reasons or something, and then they're passing it off as a wolf attack because... The wolf phobia is rampant right now. Everybody's like jumping at the word wolf. They're using the fear of a wolf to get away with evil, evil deeds. That's obviously my thought. I am starting to pick certain bits and pieces out in the story was a bit sus. But I do think there's a lot of moments which could be red herrings. Again, we're used to red herrings. The guy carrying a weapon could just be for safety. And again, like last time, it really was the first person we met. Again, that could just be lulling me into a trend where it probably isn't this guy. He's appearing so obvious that it probably isn't this guy. Obviously, you could say the family, but I don't think the family are going to do that. They do look really sad and they do look very upset. They're told you're probably not going to see her again, which is really quite sad. So I, I know they're hiding stuff. I do think they know something but I don't think it was them the small plain church we really are in Europe a lot of these up in little tiny villages because religion is very important in these places so you've got a small plain church lots of wooden decor everybody is very suspicious suspicion is rife at the moment because everyone's accusing everybody oh you you looked at me funny that must be you everybody is basically clinging to something to make them feel better so if I can put it down to a logical explanation I'll feel better I don't like knowing that I don't know who it is or I don't like the thought of not knowing what's going on so people are trying to make themselves feel better right now because I can imagine they're all looking at their kids going who's going to be next we are told that the opening we all saw was eight years ago I feel like it's important I, I know it was a while ago and I know they're using it as a highlight that this village has had interactions with wolves on and off it's not just a one-off it's it's happened before in the past it's come back again it started a year ago this one the open was very important maybe their treatment of those people maybe it's the girl in the first video because she was the first girl we technically saw so maybe it's her maybe there's the red herring maybe it's the little girl she wants revenge for what they've done to her mum maybe her mum did actually die of her wounds or something by protecting her maybe the little girl came back she's taking all the other daughters and the young girls as punishment maybe i'm grasping at straws guys i'm trying to come up with a few different ideas as we go through it. it does feel like we were shown that intro for a reason the tradition continues as we mess with people whilst introducing aya which i really like i did also think that the doctor would find this very very fascinating because aya is a medical mystery so he's not the one who freaks out or anything but you can see this very religious village they freak a lot of these people do freak out they call her a monster she ends up facing a barrel of a gun because people don't like new things people don't like stuff that they can't explain i did like the moment as we lifted the veil on aya you could see the guy at the window which is the dad i think he opens the window and he sees something i don't know where that fits into the storyline because he didn't mention seeing anything when it merges with him pointing the barrel at aya it might have been important they've shown you something that hasn't really been explained yet but maybe he did see something him not saying anything is a bit weird 
Maybe it is a parent. The tilted eye frame is really nice because we've got to get our detective hats on now. So I went through it trying to find all of the evidence. Obviously, I noted that there was human bean juice in the bed, which I did find a bit weird because I did note that there was no trails on the floor which would have been seen everywhere if something was carrying a victim who was oozing human bean juice the culprit entered from the chimney we are told that it's quite a small space and that's what's also making me think it's actually a young child or a small person because i can imagine a fully grown wolf is huge game of thrones the dire wolves they're pumped up a little bit to be bigger but I've seen how big a full wolf can get. They get huge and I don't think... Maybe it gets stuck halfway in the opening. I don't know. I, I feel like it's more likely to be a small, young person. I did love the moment when Shizuka decides to tease poor Suguru by ruining his pillow because you asked for something that you could get dirty and she doesn't really think highly of Suguru. So that was a funny little moment as well. Aya deduces that it is just the same culprit, even though it's been multiple different occurrences. It's definitely the same culprit because we've got the same teeth marks. And I guess same with humans, teeth marks and like molars and dentistry doesn't really change. And often enough, dentistry is used to identify victims. We can definitely take that as face fact that it is going to be one person. One person is calculating all of these crimes. They are definitely premeditating everything. There seems to be a pattern and obviously I told you about the Beast of Orden. That wasn't a pattern. That was actually the real deal. Feels like it's kind of mimicking that. So I would be curious to know what the dates are because maybe the Gavorden thing happened and somebody is kind of mimicking that to get away with patterns and trends. The mum maybe knows something because dad says she hasn't done anything and then she looked away really shiftily. Maybe they did see something Something. maybe they're trying to hide the fact that they maybe know why she's been targeted i think it could be the, the girl in the opening video was clearly protected by her mum so maybe she escaped maybe they're living at the bottom of that waterfall as we were told by the chief she's coming back to get her revenge by kidnapping all these girls and doing terrible things to her because she was clearly being protected by the werewolf so she must have been maybe part werewolf maybe that was her mum she has a werewolf in her blood and then maybe she's a small wealth at the moment because she'd only be eight years older. So I'm guessing maybe 16 ish. She'd still be quite small. One year ago, it lines up with the weapon going missing, which is interesting. But I don't know if it's related, if it's going to be the same thing, whether that's actually notable or not. It seems like we should keep that mental note for now. But Aya does give a sad, grim prognosis to the parents. Sadly, I don't think you're going to see your daughter alive ever again. In cases like this, it's all down to time. We're told that time is very valuable and it does seem a day, maybe two days has passed, as we have seen that a lot of the victims turn up deceased. Sadly, nothing makes this case stand out differently. I think it is a case that you're probably going to find her sooner or later, but it's not going to be fun. Name comes up, the Forest of Fangs, the one which is unlocked by the magical gem. Phileas Fogg has somehow allowed to stay in their hands. Maybe he owed it to them. They promised that they'd keep it safe, perhaps. But we do see that Team Royce has been called at the end anyways. Maybe they're there to take the credit again. So maybe that's just their deal, that they're going to take the credit. They're the insurance guys, so they make sure that the Phileas Fogg doesn't have to pay anybody, perhaps. Aya's deal with the Chief kind of led me to two ideas. One, that the culprit isn't connected to the Forest of Fangs, or they are masquerading and doing a bit of both. She basically needs that location, so we're going to have to solve this mystery to open up the next step towards Moriarty. Nice to actually have a break not to see our villains too much i don't like it when they push the villains too much because they lose their appeal they lose their mysteries taking a break for now which i think is good i don't want to see too much at once i don't want you to rush the plot i think the pacing on this show is actually quite nice and now we're going to try and work out the mystery of the werewolf plot so i'm very excited my two main theories are the girl plot, I think that one I'm pushing into first place. I think the girl in the video coming back to get revenge, that's number one for me. Number two, I think, is the doctor doing dark deeds and experiments. Number three, I think maybe the parents know something, but I don't think they're culprits. Those are my theories right now from this video. I hope you guys are enjoying the new mystery. Let me know what your thoughts are down below. Let's see if we can try and nail the culprit before they reveal it this time around. I think someone did get it last time, so you'll have to let us know what your thoughts are down below. Thank you guys again for tuning in. I hope you're looking after yourselves. I will see you guys again soon. Bye-bye.